Um, so I work at this company called Simple Energy. Um, we previously had a uh, developer that didn't know Scala, and one of the reasons that I use Scala is that it's so flexible. Um, but after seeing the code that this guy has created after not knowing Scala, maybe flexibility isn't a great thing. Um, so what we've done so far is delete about 25,000 lines of code. We've got 15,000 lines left, and we're still trying to manage it. Um, but I think we'll get it down to about 10,000 lines of code. Um, but we, it will, we'll actually have it functional and working. Um, but basically, I've, I've come out against flexibility in languages. Um, after seeing what a mess you can create with flexibility in, in Scala, um, I believe that we should limit it. And this is kind of a bit of a talk about how we can, how we can limit the flexibility in Scala. So uh, does anybody know what Veruca Vulgaris means? Common word. Common word, of course. <laughs> um, so I've been working on a tool called uh, Wart Remover. Um, awesome name, I know. Um, it originally started off as a, pack, uh, a trait that you would inherit into your package object. So for example, we'd put it into com.simpleenergy. Um, and then any packages under com.simpleenergy would automatically get uh, some enhancements or some, some limitations. Um, so it used ambiguous implicit. So does anybody know about any two-string ad? Yeah, it's awesome, right? <laughs> um, so any two-string add is an implicit that's in the pre-def, and what you can do is uh, make that ambiguous by defining two more implicits with the same type. And so when you go and uh, w when, you, when, when the Scala compiler would usually insert any two-string add, it would try and look up the, uh, the implicits, and it will find that there's more than one, and it wouldn't know what to do, so it would throw an error, which is exactly what I wanted. I didn't want uh, this, this, what I thought was a wart to, to, to just incur, uh, occur in my code. And also, uh, uh, language features, like the SIP18 language features, like uh, higher kinds, existentials. Uh, there's things like postfix ops, so you can actually, they're actually implemented using implicits. So when you go to use a feature, Scala will look up in scope, uh, is, this, is this language feature enabled by looking at the implicit? And so um, what you can do is just turn that feature completely off. You can't enable it again, because what you can do is just uh, make that amb ambiguous implicit. So when Scala compiler goes to look up the implicit, it'll find out it's ambiguous, and then you can't use the feature. Um, and also, I, d I defined a couple of warts. So you would have a couple. Of, you could uh, define a um, you could define a uh, uh, a block, and inside that you could use a macro on that block, and it would disable f features. Um, <coughs> so the first one wasn't very useful. I couldn't um, I couldn't write all the I couldn't disable as much as what I wanted. Um, so I decided to rewrite it and make it a general purpose linter. So I took the idea of using the uh, macros, uh, the, the, the code, that, the, the macros that would go over the, your blocks, and try and generalize it to be a compiler plugin as well, because they both use the reflection API. So uh, this, this new wart remover will, um, you, you write a general purpose uh, traversal um, for finding warts, and then it will be able to be run as a compiler plugin, or as a, as a macro over a block, or even as just a command line tool. Um, so there's the GitHub repo if you want to have a, have a look at it. Um, so let's pretend we hate print line. Anybody else hate print line like I do? Awesome. Um, yeah, we hate print line. <coughs> so uh, it, taking this line of code, it compiles into <coughs> this Scala AST, right? Um, so it, apply, it, it gets the function using the name, so it um, accesses a print line on the pre-def, and then supplies an argument, which is a constant, and then, yeah, applies it to the function. Um, so I'm going to show how we can uh, disable this, disable print line uh, using what remover. <coughs> is that too small? Is that okay? Hang on. I'll that's a bit better. <coughs> um, OK, so to write your own wart, you uh, create a project, an SPT project. Um, and you just create an object inside of there that extends a wart traverser. And wart traverser just, takes an, uh, just has an apply method, which takes in a universe, uh, which is an abstraction over the Scala macro universe and the reflection universe. Uh, we, need both, we need to abstract both, over both of those so they can run, run as compiler plugins and also as macros. Um, so inside of that, uh, we, sp we have to spit out a traverser at the end. Yes? Uh, why did we stop that feature with left.tp? Uh, why not just compare left with pre-dev support? 
Uh, I tried that. Okay. I tried it. <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> it's you. Your fault. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, I'll get to that anyway. Um, so we spit out a traverser, which is uh, something that will uh, traverse over our Scala AST. Um, so we define a pre-def symbol. So this is a so pre-def is a module. Um, it's got all our stuff that will make it imported imported when we use a, when we write a Scala file. Um, then we create a term name called print line. Um, and so when we traverse, we just look for anything that is uh, accessing print line. So it doesn't even have to be a function call to print line. It could just be x equals print line. Um, any, anywhere that uh, the print line is accessed on pre-def, um, we throw an error. So we say, you, you use print line, you're bad. Um, you can see that we've got this, what, what, what Eugene was getting at was uh, this. <coughs> so we're checking that the, uh, side, the, the thing on the left is the same as, uh, is a subtype of, um, of the pre-def symbol. Actually, I, I do know exactly why, and I'll show you in a minute. Um, so yeah, we're, we're just checking that the thing that was the thing that we're doing dot print line on is a subtype of pre-def. So let's um, so when we when we want to uh, use our macro, uh, sorry, our, our, our the what that we've defined, um, <coughs> we just include Scala C options. Uh, so we say that we want to use this. Uh, Dash p is like a, including a Scala C plugin, so it's actually a plugin into Scala C. Um, so we include wart remover as a plugin, and um, we uh, include a, we we put on the class path the the jar that contains our wart that we've just defined. So in here I'm def I'm, I'm uh, using the the jar that comes out of the compilation. Um, so when we actually compile this project, it'll spit out a jar, and we use that as the as the as the uh, class path to to wart remover. And then we just say, we want to use this traverser. So that's the print line traverser that we've just defined. <coughs> so this will be running. So you can see that Scala C options is in test. So anything that we put under test uh, will have print line disabled. So here we've got an example. <coughs> so there you go. It says now, uh, yeah, you use print line, so you're bad. I'll demonstrate that it actually works without print line, and then we can actually use other things. There we go. So test passed, even though there's no test. But yeah. Um, so one thing, the reason why I've got the uh, subtype there is if I go val x equals pre-def, and then I do x dot print line. Does that make sense now? So we're not actu actually actually access. Oh. oh. Make that bigger. <coughs> so we're not accessing um, print line on pre-def. We're accessing it on X, which is a subtype of pre-def, I guess. Um, so what we can also do is now that we've defined this thing, <coughs> so I've got, uh, you can see here, I've imported macros and I've imported our wart. Let's try and make a macro out of the wart that we just defined. So we just say um, no print line. Uh, takes in an any. I think this will work. There we go. So now we'll have a macro. And we can't use print line within that macro. But we can say, and that works. So the traverser is running over just that part of the code and spinning out an error. Um, so we can have. Uh, blocks inside of our code that are safe. And the final thing I want to show, I'm really ahead of schedule, um, which is awesome, because I'm sure Josh will talk a lot, <laughs> as he usually does. <coughs> um, so the final thing is uh, I've got this shell script, which will uh, run my wart from the command line, so we can actually run it from the command line instead of going through SPT or going through a macro. So let's run it over our test. So there we go. So you don't even have to spin up um, SPT or anything. You can just run it from the command line using a, uh, the Scala plugin. 
Um, so let me just show you what I want to get done with uh, with Wart Remover. Oh, so uh, we've got a, a lot of built-in warts in, inside of Wart Remover. So it, uh, I'm not sure which ones are by default. Or by, we've got like a super class. We just got a heap of these, all under one one kind of uh, one, one one traversal. Um, but yeah, like we disable any two string add, null, var, all the bad things. So you don't you can't use them. Um, and also, you can't use option get, which I know Daniel used to love to do. <laughs> um, so the wish list, um, I want to get like we've got false positives and false negatives. So um, sometimes it will say, you know, you're, you're using option get here, but it's actually spit out by the Scala compiler and not not actually written by you. So the Scala compiler should be doing the right thing, hopefully. Who knows though? Um, <laughs> so um, we can we should try and ignore everything that the Scala compiler spits out. Uh, but that's actually tricky because only some things are marked as synthetic, as in like generated by the compiler. So the compiler spits out things and says, well, this stuff is. But then you look at somewhere else and it says <coughs> it, it doesn't have any annotation saying this is, this is, this is synthetic. So it's, it's actually a hard thing to, to tell if you've written it or not. Um, and I want to get more built-in warts. There's lots and lots of warts on the, uh, on the GitHub issues. Um, and they're actually pretty easy to write, as you can see. So if anyone wants to, wants to get involved, um, just take something off the, off the, off the issue, because there's, there's dozens of them. Uh, I want to make warts as warnings, just so you don't always have to get, have an error. So you can have any two string as, as, as uh, just, a, just an error instead. Um, and mosaic warts, don't Google that. Don't Google images that. Um, <laughs> it's bad. Um, <laughs> But basically, uh, when we want, when we traverse over um, when we traverse over the AST, we should only do it once. We shouldn't have to do it multiple times per wart. So if you enable three warts, it should only do a traversal of the AST once. Um, that's it. Oh, so you want to like? Oh, uh, so the question is, do you, um, can you uh, like suppress? Uh, the wart for a particular region. That is something I want to do. Um, I haven't got around to it. Yeah. I'm not sure a good implementation of that. So. Yeah. Uh, you mean comp compilation? Yeah. Um, no idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it looks fast. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess. Uh, no. We, I mean, I've tried running it over, but we, I got. I got false positives and false negatives. I tried fixing up a couple this week, but yeah, it's it's not it's not it's not quite ready to run on the whole co fifteen thousand lines of code that I've got at the moment. Yeah, yes, yes. We've got two newbies, and yeah, they're doing actually pretty well. But yeah, it'd be good to disable parts of it for them. Yeah. So the team now is not going to write the awful code that we had. We inherited it from someone that left the company, and he basically wrote a heap of Scala, about thirty thousand lines of code. And it was completely unmanageable. He couldn't really keep up, and he left. And so uh, we took over, and we're trying to fix it up. And you're using what, what remover to we're, we're not using what remover. We're not using remo what remover at work, no. You're not. No. Uh, but I do believe that you know, after seeing what what, what someone is capable of with Scala, it's um, <laughs> <laughs> it's something I want to prohibit. Yeah. No. No. We should. Uh, I mean, that, it's, it's meant to be like a code linter, so that's the direction I'm going in. Yeah. Okay, I think that's it. Thank you. <laughs>